In this video, we're going to talk about how we can solve the microservice complexity problem using OpenTelemetry and Lamigo. We're going to go over what OpenTelemetry is and why you should be using it. And we'll also go over what modern end-to-end -end tracing platforms look like, as well as the features that they give you, such as system maps, live tracing, and the ability to follow a transaction from start to finish. So what is OpenTelemetry? Well, simply put, OpenTelemetry is an open source framework designed to create and manage telemetry data such as traces, metrics, and logs. And this telemetry data has never been more important as our applications get more and more complex. And since OpenTelemetry is an open source framework, you're not locked into any specific cloud vendors or any tools. So if you're thinking of adding any observability into your application or your infrastructure, then OpenTelemetry is what you should be doing if you want to future-proof yourself. And setting up your application to support OpenTelemetry is usually really simple. All you have to do is install a package. For example, to get my Python application to support OpenTelemetry, all I had to do was install the OpenTelemetry package. Once your application supports OpenTelemetry, you can then choose whatever vendor you want to build your observability tooling. So in this video, I'm going to show off Lumigo, which is actually the sponsor of this video, and they're super simple to set up. To get started with them, simply go to their website and create an account. Once you're logged in, you'll be prompted to connect your services, and they currently support Lambda, ECS, as well as Kubernetes. Setting up Lambda in ECS is very simple. You just click it and it'll give you a link to AWS console to connect your account. If you're using Kubernetes, you can install the Lumigo operator using Helm in just a few commands. This is the method I took as all the services that I manage run in Kubernetes. Once your environments are connected, setting up tracing is very simple. For your Lambda functions, all you have to do is toggle on the tracing toggle. And for Kubernetes, the Lumigo operator will automatically start tracing all your Python and Node.js applications. Tracing is available for other programming languages, but it does require manual instrumentation, which Lamigo goes over in their documentation, which I have linked down below in the description. All right, so once you get your Lumigo account created and your environment's connected, then you can start using it. And here we are on the dashboard page, and in the dashboard page, you can set up all your different dashboards for your developers. So for this environment, we have basic things like the amount of times our functions have been invoked. And if we scroll down, we can see which functions are failing, the cold start times, and basically you'd just be creating dashboards for whatever is important for your application. If you go on over to the issues button, this is going to show all the issues in your application. So basically what Lumigo is doing is it's having a look at that open telemetry data and it's just looking for errors and then it's posting it to this page here. So we can see here we have about 34 different issues throughout all the different applications that we're monitoring here and it just categorizes the type of error that you're getting and it's telling you the amount of occurrences and you can also go into the error and start troubleshooting it. So this really helps you get a bird's eye view of what your application is doing and the type of errors that your application is experiencing. And this helps you understand how the user is experiencing your application. So we can click on any of these different errors that we have here and get more information. So I'm just going to click on this one. And this brings us into the issue page that gives us all the information in regards to this issue. So you can see quite a bit of information here. This is going to be really helpful information for you or your developers or your operations teams to understand what's going on in the application and what is causing this type error. So you can see how many times the application has been invoked, how many times it's failed. So it's got an 88% failure rate. So this happens most of the time when the application is invoked. And it gives us our exact error here. Just tons of information for you to troubleshoot. Uh, but probably the most interesting one is to actually click this button here. And you can actually see the request flow map. So when you click here, this brings us down to the transactions menu. And it's going to show us this transaction. 
And when you hear the word transaction in Lamigo, you can think of it as a representation of a request as it propagates from service to service. So if we have a look at this request flow map, you can see that it initiated from this SQS queue and it went into our Lambda function. So this helps us see the transactions propagate through our application here. So if I click on any one of these nodes here, it's gonna give me more information about what happened when the transaction was at this point. So when it hit the Lambda function, this is exactly what happened. This is the stack trace. This is the actual event. Uh, this was the message sent from SNS. And down here, you can see all the environment variables that are set on the Lambda function. So tons of information here to help you troubleshoot and understand what was going on in the application during that transaction. Okay, so if you enjoyed the transactions, you're gonna like the system map as well. Let's go ahead and check that out. So here, the bottom left, you can see system map. And if we go in here, Basically what it's gonna do is it's gonna build a system map of everything that Lumigo is monitoring. So you can see here that we have quite a few applications that we're monitoring and we can see the exact flow of how these applications work. So if I just move around and zoom in here, you can see all the different components in our application here. You can see there's quite a few Lambda functions. We have some databases. We have some SQS queues. We have S3 buckets. And this just really helps us visualize what's going on in our application. So we can have a look at any of these components and get an understanding of what they're doing and which other services they're talking to which is usually a mystery in the microservice environment. A lot of times people build these microservices and over time the developers have a hard time understanding which service talks to which other service. So having a visual map to let you see which service is talking to which service is really helpful. Okay, so for the next portion of this video, I'm gonna go over the Kubernetes monitoring and how we can monitor our applications within Kubernetes. So I have a simple cluster here with a single deployment to it. And that deployment is called my hell map. You can see it's got five pods in it. And this is a basic Python application. So it gives me a bunch of different stats here so I can see which cluster it's on. So if I had multiple different clusters being monitored, all my applications would uh, show up here and I could sort them based on the cluster as well as do filtering based on the cluster. Here I can get some statistics about my application so I can see that about 69% of the requests uh, are successful and about 30% of them are unsuccessful and the main issue is a 404 error so we can have a look at that uh, but if we go in here first we can see it gives us some information in regards to our application what I like to do is check the Kubernetes events and basically this is the same thing as doing kube control get events it tells you everything that's happening with your pod so we can see sort of the life cycle of the pod here, all the different events, like it's pulling the image. Uh, it was scaling it at some point, so it had to kill some old pods and pull new ones. And at some point it failed to kill a pod. So this might be something that you may wanna look into if you're getting lots of different errors in the Kubernetes events. This isn't really a concern for my application though. Let's go into application issues. And this is how you would troubleshoot the actual application itself. So if we go in here, we can see that we get 32 occurrences of this 404 error. It's the only error that our application has got. Uh, if there was more errors that our application was getting, they would all be in here in a list that you could go through. So let's have a deeper look at this one. And uh, what we can do is we can just go and go latest invocation. And basically this will be the latest transaction. So you can see it brought us to the transaction menu. We have the service graph that's not too interesting here since this is a simple application. Basically it's saying it's a Python application on my Kubernetes cluster, uh, but I can get uh, the actual 
errors here. You can see it's saying 404 client error response, and I can see exactly what the problem is here. It's saying get favorite icon. Basically what web browsers do is they always try to pull this fave icon. I don't actually have one being served on my Flask web application, so this is an error that could be safely ignored or I could add a favorite icon so I no longer get that error. But all I really wanted to show here is just how you could be using Lumigo to troubleshoot your application, right? You can go in, you can see all your different applications that are deployed to your Kubernetes clusters. You can go in there, see the Kubernetes events happening in your application, and it gives you all the information that you would need to troubleshoot the issue. Now, one of my favorite features of Lumigo is the live tail button. So I'm just gonna go ahead and hit that. And basically what this is doing is it's gonna show the live transactions happening on your application here. So I'm just gonna generate some traffic to my application just by refreshing the page. And you can see that the transactions are coming in here, which is what I would expect for my application. But you can see I'm getting some 404 errors here. And it's just because sometimes the browser is looking for that favorite icon. All right, so that's all I wanted to show for this video. If you have any questions about open telemetry and how you can get started with it or how you can get started with Lumigo and start using it to observe and troubleshoot your applications, please let me know in the comments below and I'll get back to you. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.